So uh, UNICEF's UK's report, Children in Danger, says that when a child is violently killed, a world somewhere ends, just as it did for the parents of Sahar Batul in Quetta, Baluchistan, Pakistan. Her young life was lost, changing everything and everyone around them, not least for Sahar's sisters and brothers. When Sahar was born, a future of possibilities was born too. Violence wiped out that potential in an instant. No matter where a child is born, if their family happens to be living in poverty or is from an ethnic minority, as was Sahar, their chances of being exposed to violence are much greater. Moreover, the likelihood that they, or Sahar, will get justice for the violence committed against them is far lower. Violence feeds off social inequality. Children in every country are threatened by violence, but the most vulnerable live in the most disadvantaged communities and countries, especially those affected by conflict. Violent conflict has a devastating impact on children, with millions of children living in communities that are directly affected by conflict, being killed, injured and traumatised by bombing and shelling their towns and communities. Conflict exacerbates their vulnerability to all forms of violence, as the rule of law breaks down and institutions fail. On October 28, at just six years old, Sahar Batul was found a few yards from her home, brutally attacked, strangled and apparently raped. An initial search with tracker dogs led the police to the nearby home of the Muller, and a media, media blackout was apparently ordered. Meanwhile, Sahar was taken to a hospital where she was pronounced dead from strangulation and the victim of an attempted rape. Shortly afterwards, her body was released from the burial, which took place later that day, just six or seven hours after her death. Sahar's violent end is a tragedy for her family, her community, for Pakistan and the world. I was surprised to read how quickly her body was released for burial and how quickly the facts of her brutal death were decided. It is difficult to understand how a forensic post-mortem which ruled out rape and concluded it was an attempted rape could have been conducted in the time available and at the same time ensure that all tests and samples needed to aid detection and conviction of her attacker or attackers were completed. So why was her body released for burial so hastily? Returning to the attacker, after the initial reports on social media circulated about a possible involvement of a mullah, these accusations disappeared. It was several days until reports were also reported in mainstream media, and we heard from Rhubarb Medi earlier how that was prompted by her own promos on social media. Two more suspects have since been arrested, but news of a prosecution, as promised several days ago, has not materialised. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child emphasises the need to shelter children from armed conflict. Children affected by violence also have a right to restitution, including appropriate compensation, counselling, and other forms of support that will allow them to rebuild their lives. Will Sahar's siblings be entitled to this? Perpetrators of violence, as possibly Sahar's killers are, or killer, use their power and status to evade responsibility for their crimes, assisted when society gives the abuser and not the victim the benefit of the doubt. Time and again, the powerful systematically manipulate societies to deprive children of their right to justice and of life free of violence. It is not evident that attacks on the Hazara are given the priority the issue deserves. There is a long list published in the Human Rights uh, Report that we've just heard about of the Hazara murdered between 2008 and 2012 
in the column showing the status of the investigation, as Heather Barr has reported, not one of them reports the conviction of one single perpetrator. Will Sahar's case get the priority it deserves? Will anyone be convicted? So what is this conflict that was present in Sahar's short life? As in the short life of 10-year-old Ilias, killed in an attack this last Eid, and children killed in attacks against other groups in Pakistan. The majority of attacks have been claimed by Lashkari Jongri <coughs> under the pretense of religion and ridding Pakistan, the land of the pure, from anyone who does not share their ideology. In other words, they want to deny Pakistanis the freedom to believe, or not, in what they wish. When it comes to the peaceful exercise of religion or belief, no government, group or individual has the right to compel others to act against their conscience or restrain them from answering its call. It is a right protected under international human rights law. And yet this group, this Lashkari Jonfi, wants to deny millions of Pakistanis this right and in so doing, they commit human rights abuses on an unprecedented scale, including abuses against the rights of the child. Moreover, their actions are not being halted, and they are not being held to account. The persecution of Hazaras can be viewed as being because they are not of a particular Deobandi persuasion, rather than what they are, or what they believe. And this binds all the groups, and for that matter, most of the Pakistani population together, because they are not of a Deobandi persuasion. Freedom of religion and belief is about protecting people's right to believe and remain true to their deepest convictions, be they Shia, Ismaili, Sunni, Sufi, Ahmadi, Christian, Hindu, Sikh, whatever, and it is what these groups are not, which joins us all and forms the basis of a solidarity from which we should counter this oppression. Far from isolating each group from each other, the actions of these terrorists, in truth, bind all together. Far from being a disparate collection of small, different religious and ethnic groups, it is us who are the vast majority, identified by what we are not. We are not the extremist, militant, murderous minority. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. That's a very powerful address. And thank you for all the work that you do as Secretary of the All Party Group, which is a very good job that it needs to expand and to widen the contact with the fact in the parliament and through parliament in uh, members and citizens. And thank you very much. Now,